For you personally, what was the best part of your year? Oh God. Um, I mean, I have no prepare for that one. <laughs> I have no feelings and emotion. So, I mean, look, the podcast business wise had the best year yet, you know. So let's have another year like I did this year. And, you know, I bought an apartment in the city. And like, look, this was a good year, right? Like things are things are good. Yeah, I have no real complaints this year. And what about you? I mean, nothing major happened, but I bought an apartment in New York and I had a great year with the podcast. That's amazing. Well, to answer your question for me, I mean, I started my podcast this year. We started um, the very end of March and we quickly became one of the top um, podcasts in the country, Canada and Australia. And, you know, I'm so excited about that. I feel so thankful for all of our listeners who have, um, you know, believed in me and, and my guests. And, you know, so I'm just really, really thankful for that. And I'm really looking forward to the next year to see what else happens. And, you know, not to be shady, but my listeners have PTSD every time they hear a dog bark. So we welcome right. your dog. They are having a little PTSD here, my listeners, but we won't get into that. It's yeah. always nice to see you, Rachel. Look, Thank I got to be a little shady here. Come on. But congratulations and welcome to the podcast game. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, before one more thing I wanted to uh, ask you about, what was your favorite um, sponsor of the year. I know that um, as, oh, ab- yeah. as podcasters, we get to um, sample a lot of different sponsors. Do you have a couple that you thought were were your most exciting for you? Well, no one really uh, believes. Like I, right now, Oak Essentials, I love a good facial product. No one believes how much I love Oak Essentials. And I think, yeah, Oak Essentials. And for me, listen, I you open my refrigerator, any of my refrigerators, and I literally have thousands of bubbly. Before bubbly was a sponsor, this is the and bubbly became a sponsor. So now I get free bubbly, but I really was drinking like if you open my refrigerator, it's like all the grapefruit are here. It's a very OCD refrigerator. All the it's every color is right there. So and oak yeah. essentials for the face is the best facial product possible. Okay, good. I like that. For me, I was really impressed with One Skin, which I know you had also. Um, I love it. I I use it all the time, and now I'm buying it, and I'm buying it for Christmas gifts for people. I've been really impressed with Factor, a um, meal service, which I thought was great. They have amazing shakes. You know, I get a lot of meal services. And then for me, I wanted to give a, a shout-out to a friend of mine who owns a company um, called Miami Gorgeous Beauty. Have you ever... Um, a Miami gorgeous tan. Have you ever used that tanning lotion? No. Okay. I'm going to show you what the bottle looks like. It's phenomenal. And you basically, she sends you a mitt and you can do, I live in Florida now. I don't even go in the sun because I use her tanning stuff. All the celebrities use it. All the housewives use it. They always promote it, but it actually works. And, um, it's amazing. And, um, I've never had like weird streaks. I literally crave it and live for it. So like that to me is the product of the year. And now you made me think of one more thing because you said clean and healthy living. Aqua True water purifier. I'm really, believe it or not, I have a weird phobia of like drinking tap water. So Aqua True, their filter, the osmosis process is bad. Really, it's like the cleanest filtration. It's, I, I know you think this is crazy, but I'm excited by a water filter. Yes, Aqua True. Okay. Bye. Amazing. And, and my code for all my things is understood. What is your code if people want to? order through you velvet i tell people whatever you're thinking you need don't buy it just dm me because i got something for everybody exactly yeah. honey love okay go on we have yeah. awards to give out sweetie we do. we do all right let's get right into it so david drum roll. um what do you think was the biggest comeback of 2023 And let's just say for people listening, this isn't just Bravo. This is pop culture, anything. My biggest comeback, I I cannot help it. It is Bravo. Here I am saying that. R-H-O-S-L-C, Salt Lake City Housewives. The first season was great. The second season was good. The third season was one of the worst seasons in Housewives history. It was horrible. I could barely watch it. I didn't watch it. I didn't even want to watch season four. Everyone agrees this season of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is How could you go from, like, horrible to, like, one of the best shows on TV? It is so good. My biggest comeback goes to Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Okay. Amazing. What about Um, you? I would say uh, it's a comeback for the Bachelor franchise. I thought it was pretty spectacular that they did the Golden Bachelor. Have you seen the Golden Bachelor? 
I have not seen it, but I have to tell you, the ratings were through the fucking roof. It's a huge hit. Yeah, it's a huge hit. I actually watched it. I watched it with my daughter, and she was like, Mom, you should be on this. And I'm like, um, I'm not 65, you know, like, come on. But I thought it was such a great idea to have someone who's older, who has lost a, a loved one, um, you know, to really see them find love. It really gave people hope. And I thought it was not only adorable, everyone was like, oh, it's so cute. It really, I mean, it was really romantic and loving. And it was just, I was rooting for the guy. And I didn't, I don't even watch The Bachelor, you know? So I thought since like, you know, season one or two. So I thought it was a comeback for the franchise. I thought it was a great idea for them to do that. I hope they continue to do that. Um, and uh, I hope it continues to be a success. And I think Golden Bachelorette should be coming next. I think it's right around the corner. I feel yeah. like. Well, give you know, I'm going to be 50 in a year, so maybe they'll do, you know, I'm on their radar. Let me, let, let me submit your name. Now, you do have competition because when she was on this podcast, Luanne De La Sepp says she would like to also be thrown into the mix. So between the two of you, let's, I'm going to back one of you. So okay, fine. there we go. Weird. Okay. Number two, biggest downfall of 2023. I swear I have things on my list that are not Bravo. My biggest downfall is Bravo, Bethany Frankel. I'm sorry. I'm so, where is the reality reckoning? I think Bethany is just confused. I don't dislike her. She's still so smart. And like, I have such a complicated relationship with Bethany, but I just think she's throwing so, like, take your $120 million, which apparently you got from selling Skinny Girl, and go live your life. Why are you even trying? I think she's throwing so much stuff at the wall, and none of it is making sense. And where is the reality reckoning? We both had Mark Garagos on our podcast. We love him. Where Where is it? Have you heard anything about the reality re reckoning lately? I haven't. I really have not. I, I did hear at the end that they signed some deals about, you know, uh, making it a safer environment for people who didn't feel safe. But beyond that, I, I think it flopped. I did have a lot of people on my show that talked about um, how they wanted to be a part of it. And I did have a number of people that said they were happy with the position they were in. These are current Bravo stars that were saying, you know, how, you know, they did not see what this big re uh, reckoning was. You know, I had Shep on um, from uh, Southern Charm, who was really happy with the place he was in. Kelly Dodd even said that she never saw any of that stuff. If people want to drink, they drink on their own accord. If they want to act like an idiot and make bad decisions, they can't come back later and blame production for it. So, um, you know, and as somebody who's been on a reality show um, and has seen it edited after the fact, you, you know, you they can only edit so much. You have to give them what you give them, right? So, I don't know. I think people should be more responsible for their actions. I think what happened with the um, Scandal situation was different because there was a lot of bullying and shaming um, in, in situations like that. So I think that is a more dangerous situation um, than what we're talking about, like the everyday person who feels like they can cry wolf after the fact because they acted dumb and got naked on camera. 